sure, we've all heard of the odd mind-controlling nebula or sentient spaceship, but there are certain things that Starfleet encounter on their travels which should, by all accounts, fundamentally change everything about philosophy, life, and our place in the universe, only to be completely forgotten about the next week. With that in mind, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture, and let's take a look at the 10 biggest discoveries made in Star Trek that no one cared about. Number 10. Multiple Methods of Immortality Starfleet has managed to drastically increase the human life expectancy from 80 years in our time to around 120 years in the time of the next generation. However, humans still have to die, along with most other known species in the universe. The thing is though, they really shouldn't have to. Throughout the history of Star Trek, humanity has discovered dozens of methods of increasing the human lifespan or just flat out cheating death. From the Borg nanoprobes used to resurrect Neelix in the Voyager episode Mortal Coil, to the transporter accident in the Next Generation episode Rascals, which reverts several officers back into children. The list goes on and on. If you really feel like it, you could even pull a Kirk and jump into the next temporal nexus that comes along and live a hundred years in a psychedelic trance-like state of pure happiness. Until Picard comes in, pulls you back into reality, only for you to die ten minutes later. None of these methods are used beyond a couple of episodes. There are so many possibilities of immortality in the Star Trek universe, and yet no one ever bothers to look into them. Perhaps the only true way to live forever is to have your name in the intro credits. Number 9. Whales beat humans to first contact In Star Trek IV, A Voyage Home, we learn that humans were not the first life on Earth to make contact with aliens. Earth's whales had been communicating across the universe with alien life using their whale songs before going extinct due to hunting. Unfortunately, even after Kirk and the crew return whales back to their time, we never learn why these aliens were so interested in them. For a long time, the closest we get to some follow-up on this came from the Next Generation Enterprise D blueprint, which showed multiple two-deck high water tanks in the middle of the saucer section labelled Cetacean Navigation Lab, cetacean being a word for whales and dolphins. This suggests that whales and other cetaceans now work alongside humans in the time of the next generation and assist in navigation in their own specialised habitats. Finally, to the applause of many diehard fans, after being teased in Lower Decks episode Second Contact, we finally got to see the fabled Ops in the second season, along with some horny belugas, at last solidifying it in canon. Still, you would think that if most Federation starships had multiple two-storey water tanks in them filled with whales, that we'd see them by now. Number 8. Aliens Manipulated Earth's History Throughout humanity's history on Star Trek, there have been many instances of aliens interfering in our development, and effectively breaking the Prime Directive before it was cool. Sometimes it's minor, such as when T'Pol's ancestor in Enterprise episode Carbon Creek crash-landed on Earth in the 50s and introduced humanity to Velcro. Other times, it can profoundly change our history. In the Voyager episode Death Wish, Janeway learns that a member of the Q Continuum was responsible for the apple falling on Isaac Newton's head in the 17th century, leading to him developing his laws of gravity. Despite learning that a superintelligent alien entity was secretly guiding human history, Janeway simply moves on by the next scene. Q is actually actively training humanity throughout the next generation by putting us on trial, effectively controlling the course of history by teaching Picard and the Enterprise D crew some of his many lessons. There are some other examples such as the Preservers and the Skagarans. The point is though, first contact definitely did not take place on the 5th of April 2063, at least not for everyone. Number 7. Some dinosaurs escaped extinction and became sentient. So not only were humans not the first intelligent life on Earth, neither were whales. In the Voyager episode Distant Origin, we learn that about 65 million years ago, at the end of the Cretaceous period, a species of hadrosaur survived the mass extinction of the dinosaurs and escaped Earth to eventually evolve into the Voth, a humanoid reptilian empire with technologies far beyond the Federation. The Voth actively tried to suppress this knowledge, which explains why none of them seem interested in their lost home. 
but after this one episode, Starfleet never makes any attempt to learn any more about their distant cousins. Perhaps they simply fear the repercussions of questioning the dogma of the Voth, as we have seen that their technological power far exceeds most species in the galaxy. Number 6. Warp Travel Damages Space in the Next Generation episode, Force of Nature, Hikaran scientists show research to the Federation that suggests that high-speed warp travel slowly damages the fabric of space-time, and that if nothing was done, their region of space would be rendered uninhabitable. The Federation initially rejects their finding until one scientist sacrifices herself in a warp core breach, proving that it does in fact cause substantial damage to space. The Federation immediately puts laws in place to ban travel beyond Warp Factor 5, except in emergencies, and to restrict damaged regions of space to essential travel only. Sounds good, right? Except the Federation actually never enforces these laws. We see countless ships go past Warp 5 after this episode, and most of the time there's absolutely no emergency to speak of. Voyager gets a pass. And let's not forget that Earth is a major hub of tourism, with ships warping in and out of the system every second. So really, the space around Earth should be totally decimated by now. Number 5. Nanoprobes In the last few seasons of Voyager, Seven of Nine's Borg nanoprobes became the writer's favourite solution to pretty much any problem. As mentioned earlier, they revive Neelix from the dead in the episode Mortal Coil. And as we see from the episode Course Oblivion, they can also improve warp capabilities. Unfortunately though, only a fake copy of the crew were able to figure this out right before dying. The list goes on and on. In the episode Friendship 1, nanoprobes are used to heal radiation burns better than any medication on the ship. And in the episode Someone to Watch Over Me, they're used to cure an ambassador of his drunkenness by literally attacking the molecules of synthahole in his bloodstream. Unfortunately, for all the crew of Voyager who died after Neelix, these methods were never used again. While it is true that Seven of Nine possessed only a limited number of nanoprobes, Starfleet have encountered numerous dead Borg drones and not once thought to salvage their nanoprobes even after Voyager learned of their powers. Number 4. The Center of the Galaxy Earth is 25,800 light years away from the center of the Milky Way. That's over a third of the distance of Voyager's 70,000 light year journey that is supposed to take them roughly 70 years. And yet, in the infamous Star Trek V The Final Frontier, the Enterprise makes it there in less than a day. Well, let's ignore that tiny detail just for a second and talk about the fact that when the Enterprise does reach the center of the Milky Way, they don't find a supermassive black hole that's millions of times the mass of the Sun, but instead a swirly energy field surrounding a planet that is solely inhabited by a giant head who likes to cosplay as God. The Klingons proceed to blow him up as the crew escapes and no one ever returns. But who was this entity? Why does he need a starship so much? Are there any more of him? And why is the centre of a galaxy an energy field surrounding a planet? At the very least, Voyager could have checked it out on their way back. Number 3. The many better alternatives to warp travel. Spore drive. Borg Transwarp Conduit Quantum Slipstream Drive. All of these are examples of propulsion systems far superior to warp travel in every way, and probably less damaging to space. Unfortunately, all of these alternate technologies fall into development hell and end up never being in widespread use, despite being proven effective if done right. It shouldn't be too hard for Starfleet to reverse engineer time warp technologies from a salvaged Borg cube, for example. But usually, after one failed attempt that usually ends in catastrophe, they scrap the whole idea and usually classify it too. Then of course there's Captain Janeway, who instead of studying the Caretaker Array to perhaps learn how to control it, decides to blow it up to keep it from the Kazon. Aside from some minor improvements, Starfleet's warp engines have operated on the same basic principles from the time of Zephron Cochrane's first faster-than-light flight in 2063, all the way to Star Trek Picard in 2399. It definitely seems like it's time for an upgrade. Number 2. All humanoid species share a common ancestor. 
In the Next Generation episode, The Chase, several Alpha Quadrant species come together and realise that fragments of all their DNA, when combined, produce a holographic message of an ancient humanoid species that claims to be the ancestor of all humanoid life in the galaxy. Apparently, they were the first life in this part of the galaxy, and in their loneliness, decided to seed thousands of planets with their genetic code, leading life on all these planets to develop towards a common humanoid body type. While this was clearly just an excuse for the low-budget aliens who were clearly people in lizard suits with a bit of junk stuck on their forehead, the implications of this within the Star Trek universe are profound. The Klingons and Cardassians reject this news out of disgust, but the Romulans and the Federation are not only open to the idea, but convinced, with the Romulan commander saying to Picard, Perhaps humans and Romulans are not so dissimilar after all. Despite this, this revelation never comes up in any political or historical discussions. I mean, all humanoid life in the universe is related. Number 1. Q The Q continuum doesn't have a beginning. It has always simply been. They are nothing short of gods, other than the slight difference that they don't know everything. But they can read minds, so don't think you can hide anything from them. Each Q possesses complete and total control over all space, matter and time in the universe. They can change the course of history on a whim or reduce entire stars to dust. So why is it that Starfleet typically reacts to the arrival of Q with nothing more than slight annoyance? All captains of Starfleet are briefed on Q and his abilities and told not to play into his games. But here he is, displaying powers beyond belief and able to solve any problem with ease, and the crew of the Enterprise don't even think to ask him some questions. Such as, where do we go when we die? How does the universe end? Sisko cares so little about his godlike abilities that he literally punches him in the face. Starfleet treats him like just a simple nuisance to put up with. Janeway got transported back to before the Big Bang by Q and barely reacted. Even Riker, upon gaining the powers of the Q, treats it like nothing more than a cool party trick. And there you have it, that's 10 discoveries made on Star Trek that no one cares about. If you can think of any that weren't mentioned in this video, then comment them below and while you're there, like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. You can also head over to Twitter to follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. Once again, I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day and boldly go where no one has gone before.